Good morning, Internet. Thank you so much for joining me. I know it takes time out of your day to be here. In this video, I want to talk with you guys about what might happen to our REITs, our Real Estate Investment Trust, if the market crashes in our face. As you guys know, I've made a few videos on REITs now on the channel, and I've been getting a lot of comments basically stating that if I'm investing in REITs right at this moment in 2019, that I'm a complete idiot because the market is about to crash in my face and I'm gonna lose all of my money. Is anybody else getting this? Is that the housing market's gonna crash on you, the stock market's gonna crash on you, the bond market's gonna crash on you? Well, let's address that. Let's see if these people, if it makes sense, if their statements make sense, and how we might play the situation if that is the case. In this video, I have six different examples that I've pulled of REITs. Some, most of them are individual stocks, and I've pulled one ETF that we're gonna look at. We're gonna see what did happen to these things back in 08, which was the subprime mortgage crash, which primarily affected real estate and the stock market. And let's see what happened to these things since then and where we stand today. If you're new to the channel, my name is Mike the CPA and welcome to Money and Life TV where we teach finances, investing, and taxes. If you guys like the work I do here on this channel and the videos I produce, you can support the channel simply by dropping a like, leaving a comment below, and consider sharing this video with others. Thank you so much. Let's dive into it. The first REIT I wanna look at with you guys is EPR Properties, which is one of the REITs I own. In fact, many of the REITs we're looking at today are ones in my portfolio. So I was curious of what would happen to some of my REITs if, it, if the market crashed here pretty soon. So let's start with the dividends, and let me zoom in, and hopefully you guys can see this. I wanted to see what happened to the dividend history of these companies. Did the incomes keep rolling in? So this EPR has been around since 1997, I'm gonna scroll down here to 2008, roughly, and you see where this green is right here? That was the highest amount of dividends paid before the crash hit, and around the time the crash hit, during the 08 subprime mortgage crisis. If we scroll down here, what I noticed that is unique to EPR is they're able to keep paying dividends out well into the future, even after the market started to recover. The market started to recover in 2010, or late 2009, somewhere in 2010 is when the market started to bounce back. Since 2013, their dividends have been rising back in value, slowly but surely, each year, as you can see, as I scroll down here, all the way to 2019, where they're now paying about 37 cents per share. But what happened price-wise? Let's look at the price action and the charts, which I've included all of this information just so you guys know. You can look all this stuff up for yourself. It's on Yahoo Finance. That's where I pull most of my information from for my videos. Not all, but most of it. Let me scroll, let me zoom in. At the peak, uh, which I think was 2007 roughly, this 2007, 2008, this thing was sitting at about $68 per share. And after the crash hit, it fell all the way to about $15 per share. An 81% drop in value. Ouch, talk about your punch in the face. I want you to hit me, give me your best shot. Hit you? Yeah, come on. I, I can't because what I- Do it, give me your- How was that? Is that okay? Quick note here, as we're looking at these guys, just know that past performance does not always dictate future performance, but I think history can repeat itself in a very similar fashion, which is why we're looking at this and how your REITs and your portfolio might behave. Whether they're these REITs or different REITs, at least you'll have an idea of what to expect so that you don't have a panic attack if you see your investments drop in value. We, we just saw that this investment fell 81%, but what happened over the last 10 years? This thing, if, if you would've got in, if you would've started buying back in around $15 per share, or even right here, which is around $20 per share, Look what this thing has done over the past 10 years. It is back up at $77 per share, which is how much of an increase? You would have quadrupled your money since 2008, 2009 roughly. Average annual return, not including the dividend, just from price appreciation is 38%. That's average annual return. Pretty impressive if you ask me. Throw the dividend on, on top of there, you guys are looking at, what, 40 something percent return every year? Not bad. Can you guys live with a 40% return? I sure can. Do I care if this thing fell this much in value? Not really. As long as I have money in other places, 
I can hold on, I'll be fine. And that's why I, in my last video I just produced on talking about protecting yourself for recession, I talked about some of the strategies I use to not only protect our wealth, but to also then take advantage of future opportunities that come into play after a recession. The next REIT we're looking at is the Realty Income Trust, if I'm saying that right. Yeah, Realty Income Corporation, I should say. That's what it's called. Ticker symbol is O, and this is one of the most popular REITs in the market today, and it's been around for a really long time. It's been around, guys, since 1994. Many of the viewers on this channel weren't very old when this thing started paying dividends. And what's unique about O, or the Realty Income Corporation, is you'll notice that since 1994, they have had consecutive annual dividend increases, I think for like 26 years, 27 years, something like that. But you could just scroll down here and look at the dividend history, guys. It is really impressive to me. This means regardless of the market conditions, now if you remember the tech bubble hit in 2000, right? That's when the tech crash happened. Did, this, did your income stop if you own this? No, your income kept coming in. Now your value in your shares might have dropped, but your income still coming in, at least your dividend income. And since then, let's go to 2008, what happened to this thing during the subprime mortgage crisis? Did they drop their dividends? No, they've always been really conservative with their payouts. Therefore, they were able to keep increasing their dividends even through a major crash, which is really impressive. And even today, if we keep going, notice how the dividend just keeps increasing. And as of 2019, you're, we're sitting at 22 cents per share. Very impressive. I'm very impressed with Realty Income Corporation. How have they done price-wise? Okay, in 2008, this thing was sitting at roughly $28 per share, give or take. That was the high before the crash. So it went from $28 a share down to $15 a share, which really is not a bad drop. We just looked at EPR. How much of a drop did it have, guys? 81%? Not the Realty Income Corporation. I think it's because they're more conservative with their finances and they've done a much better job managing the company. 46% drop. Not bad considering some of the other REITs we're about to look at. Since then, this thing has gone up from $15 a share all the way up to $78 per share in 2019 of where we're at today. That is a 420% increase in value since the, over the last 11 years. Once again, that is an average annual return of roughly 38%. So, so far we've looked at two REITs and the average annual return on both of them has been 38%. Throw the dividends on top of that, we're looking at 40% return per year. Is your guys' stress going down now looking at these things? I mean, as long as you're holding on to these things and investing more, you're doing fantastic. The next company we're looking at is Crown Castle International Corporation. Now, I don't have, I couldn't access the complete dividend history on this one, guys. I only have dividend history since 2014, as you can see. But at, what you can see is since 2014, they continue to do what? What do they do, guys? They keep paying us more and more and more to be a shareholder of their REIT or their real estate investment trust. I'm happy with that. What happened to this thing in 2008? So in 2008, this thing was sitting at roughly, if I zoom in, I'm thinking that this was about 48 bucks in dollars in value in 2008. And then it fell to this point. So it fell from 48 bucks roughly to about, I think it was like 14 bucks. Let me go down here. Or no, 20 bucks, sorry, $20. So it fell from 48 to 20 and the crash at the lowest price. That's a 58% decrease in value, ouch. Can we live with that? Well, what happened since then? This thing has had amazing, amazing performance since then. Look at this. Since 2009, roughly, this thing has gone up 585% in value. Holy. You are kidding. That is amazing. <laughs> Get out. That means, guys, over the past 10 or 11 years, you're getting an average annual return of 53% every year and this on your money if you would have got in back in this time period. And when did this, the market really start to rebound, guys? Let's just take a moment to look at that. Well, as we can see, the high in 08 was right here, right? And the low was right here. It, at this point, at this price level, we're now matching the high of 08, right? And this is where the breakout starts to occur is right here. So since 2011, since 2012, the market started 
pushing back up. It really broke out to, to new highs at that point. But until then, so it took from 2009 to 2012, roughly, to start to break new highs. But the market started going back up, though, sometime in 2009. All right, this is another REIT I own, guys. It's the NHI. It's the National Health Investors Corporation. Basically, what they do is they own senior living facilities and different healthcare facilities around the country. And basically, senior living, like I said, senior living retirement kind of homes, stuff like that. That's what they own. By the way, guys, if you want to learn more about the companies we're discussing in today's video, I'll link the last video I did on the REITs I own. I own seven different REITs currently in my portfolio. And I go over the a quick background and the history of many of these REITs in that previous video. I'm going to link that in the description and the comment section below if you guys want to check that out. Okay, this thing has been around since 1991. So let me zoom in on the dividend history here so you guys can see this. And if we scroll down to 2008, notice that its maximum dividend payout before it started to drop was 69 or 69 cents per share. After the crash, they lowered their payout a little bit. But notice, now we're talking about healthcare here, ladies and gentlemen, healthcare. Do you think your health cares whether the market's going up or down? No, your health doesn't care. Do you think they're gonna shut down senior living facilities and hospitals and things like that if the market goes down? No, they can't. They have to keep these buildings operational. It's part of the pub public health, public safety, and all these things. We have to keep these things going. They're gonna find a way to keep these services in play so that people can get their health care provided, right? What's impressive about NHI that really impressed me looking back at the history, the dividend payout history of this for each share or you know, each time they've paid a dividend is they've kept, they were able to keep increasing it until about 2013, they had a small blip. But look at, overall though, do you guys notice that the trend's going up? I certainly do. Look at this, 77 cents per share in 2015, they're paying 85 cents. And as of 2019, they're paying a dollar and five cents per share, not bad. Let's look at that share price, guys. And I'm going to, you guys can see the graph here. In 2018, the high was around $36 per share right here. It fell to a low of about $20 per share in 08, 09, or sorry, $18 per share when I looked closer at the graph when I was doing the research. 50% decrease in value, 50% drop. But since then, now it hasn't had the, explosive performance as the other REITs did, but even even so, even so guys, since 2009, 2010, if you would've got back in at that point around this $18 mark, $20 mark, 300% aver return, almost 350% return over the past, in total over the past 10, 11 years, which is about 30% return per year. Their dividend payouts are like five or 6%, their yield is. So you're looking at a 36% average annual return if you include the dividend. Now let's look at DLR. And I just wanna know real quick, guys, do you, do you get this a lot? Some Now my family understands that I like investing and they're actually really positive about it. They they think I'm smart for doing it. They think I'm smart for what I'm doing on YouTube. They think they think my overall plan is is secure and sound and they see that I have a, I'm going somewhere. That's That's what my family sees. But I've also encountered just in the general public if you're talking to somebody about investing, I've also encountered the other experience, and I don't know if you guys run into this sometimes, but if you mention that you're investing, do you have anybody just snap at you, just like, oh, you're a, you're a fool. You're gonna lose all your money. That's, you know, that's a con man's game, this and that. Now, could these investments drop in value? Any investment we own? Absolutely, it could happen. And, you know, I've had people in the past, if something drops, even like in 2014, I think it was when the market took a steep drop, and even in 18, when the market took a steep drop towards the end of the year, people were like, ah, I told you, Mike, not to invest. You're, you're a fool for investing. Basically, that's how they came across to me. But when you look back at history, and you see where things can go, and you see, and you're like, okay, well, do I have my ducks in a row? And, can I pay my debts? Do I have cash in the bank? Yes. I have all my investments, or my investments secure. Do I need the money from these investments? No. Well, then I can ride this thing out, right? I can ride it out. And if I know how to use inverse ETFs, and I know how to use other, other types of investments in my portfolio, I can actually make money while the market's going down. 
So I, I don't know. I just wanted to mention that because I think if you talk to people about investing, you're going to get a lot of criticism, especially with real estate. And they're saying how everything's inflated right now, which I think it is. I think this will eventually come down. I'm not saying it will. I don't know for sure, but just something to look out for. Now let's talk about DLR real quick. DLR has been around since 2004, or at least that's when they started paying dividends. If now they own t technology, right? They rent out cloud accounting servers and networks and things like that. In 2018, they were paying roughly 31 cents per share. Then did their business, now like I said, they're more of a commercial kind of company and serving businesses, did they have to decrease their dividend? No, they did not. And look, at since 2008, they've been able to keep increasing their dividend every single year to now it's $1.08 per share. So the point of all this, guys, as I'm showing you these different investments is to just show you that Yes, a market crash can greatly impact the pr stock price, the share price of these in investments, but it doesn't mean your income is going to dry up. Your income is going to keep coming in. And boy, oh boy, if the market crashes, I am ready to buy. Oh, I am ready, folks. And I hope you are too. Get yourself in that position because I would love to, buy, to get a return of like 30% per year. That would be fantastic, right? In 2008, the high on this was $50 per share, okay? And it fell to $20 per share. 60% drop, ouch. But if you would have held on and if you would have started adding more to your position at that point, guess what? You, since 2009 to now, you would have made a 550% return on your money, which is roughly 50% per year. Throw the dividend on there, which is like 3% annual yield. You're looking at 53% average annual return. Woo, good stuff, guys, good stuff. And the last one, because I know a lot of you guys out there who like investing, like doing it through ETFs. Now, I, I enjoy doing a mix of ETFs and individual stocks. As you can see with my REITs, I like owning them individually. But, you know, as often though, this ETF, it does pretty darn well, guys. So look at VNQ and Fidelity has a real estate investment trust index fund as well that you might consider looking at. All right, so what's interesting about VNQ, which owns, I think, like 200 different REITs within its portfolio, because they have good companies in there and bad companies, you're well diversified, but your dividends are kind of going to be all over the place because they have good and bad and average companies, right? It's all bundled in there, and so you get an overall feel for that real estate market in that sector. What you're going to see here with the dividend payout is it's kind of been all over the place. Its highest payout going back in time was in 2006, $1.49 per share roughly. After 2008, when those REITs took a dive, the dividends took a dive as well. So I don't know what kind of all the different companies this thing holds, but notice the dividend went to $0.37 or $0.30 cents per share. And since then, it's kind of been sporadic since that time period. Now, even, even since 2013, 2015, it's kind of all over the place. So you're getting ups and downs, highs and lows. The average of all this, if I just highlight all this, it looks like their average dividend payout in, over the history is 72 cents per share, about 72 cents, looking at its history since 2004. Now, many of you think because you're in an ETF that your investment's safe and sound because you're well diversified. What you're gonna see though, is if you're concentrated all in one sector like this thing is, it can go down just like an individual stock. And let me show you how, let me show you how that works. So look at this thing back in 2008, that was the high. The high was $64 per share, and this puppy fell all the way to roughly, I think it's about 18, yeah, $18 per share roughly. 72% drop in value, 72%. Even in an ETF, guys, it can still fall like a rock. I don't want you to ever have the impression that it can't. Even, even though it owns a lot of different stocks, if all the market goes down, these things go down with it. But as you can see, guys, since the last recession, this thing has gone up 400% in value. You're getting an average annual return of 37%. Throw on the dividend yield on top of that, you're about a 40% average annual return every single year since 2009. It's been doing great. I highly recommend VNQ. I think in 2019 or in, in this year, I think it's up like close to 30%. It's like 25%, 30%. Maybe, maybe you guys can let me know in the comments, but it's up there. It's up there. So if you've owned this, you're doing well and 
Congratulations. We just looked at six different investments. We looked at one ETF, Vanguard's VNQ, the real estate index fund, and then we looked at five other REITs that are popular out there that a lot of different people own, including myself. Now let's look at the summary page. If you were investing, if you've held on to these things, you didn't sell off during the crash, and you just keep kept adding to your position over time, kept adding more and more shares, how would you have done? Let's look at the summary. In summary, when we look at that history, the average share price drop of these six investments during the 2008 crash was 61%. Now, that sounds horrible, right? That sounds horrible. But knowing the history of where these went after the crash, do you think you guys can stomach a 60% drop? I sure can. I mean, I'm young enough to take the risk. Now, if you're near retirement, you might not be able to. You might want to sell off some of those shares or maybe move park move some of your money out of equities into something else. But if you want to ride it out, your income would have kept coming in. Would there be some volatility in your dividend payouts? A little bit, a little bit. But as you can as you saw, most of the dividends that we saw went up in value or didn't go down very much even after the crash. If you had a diversified portfolio, your income just kept coming in. And if you added more to that, you just did better and better and better. So the average annual return for these six investments since 2009, when the market slowly started coming back. Now remember, the market broke a new high and started becoming bullish in 2012, sometime in 12. You would have made 38% per year on average every year if you would have bought in at that point. Not bad at all. That means if you had $10,000 invested, your money basically just turned in to close to 40,000. If you invested 100,000, which I would love to do if the market crashes, then you you basically quadrupled your money. Your 100 grand just became 400,000. As you guys can see, there's a lot of potential here, and I wanted to just cover this stuff with you guys because there was a lot of heat I was taking in the comments saying basically saying, "Mike, you're an idiot. This is going to crash in your face." You're gonna lose all your money, blah, 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 blah. Yes, will my investment go down like a rock? Yes, I'm fine with it. I'm not sweating it. As long as the company, as long as a long-term investor, do I care so much about the price movement of this? No, because when I'm investing in a REIT, I'm investing for income. I'm not necessarily investing for growth. It's nice to have growth, and as you guys can clearly see here, we get growth from these things as well, but I'm not trying to trade them like a stock. I'm As a long-term investor, th uh, this part of my portfolio, I'm looking for income, and the income, I've, it's been proven, keeps coming. So I'm not worried about a major drop in the market. And if it does drop, like I said, I'm going to definitely add more and participate and buy more, average down my cost per shares. I'm going to try to figure out when this market's going to level out, if it does crash, and then take advantage of it from there. Am I saying the market's going to crash? No. Do I know for sure it's going to crash? No. But I just wanted to show you the history of these things, guys, and how much opportunity you have if you're ready for it if a crash does come. Also, to not panic if something like this happens. All right, guys. Well, that is all the information I have for you in today's video. I hope you got a lot out of it, and I hope you this gives you perspective of where we might be going and how much you could benefit from a crash if it does come. Either way, I'm still going to be investing for the long term and utilizing some other strategies as well that I'm currently learning. All right, guys, with that being said, if you liked today's video, make sure to let me know by dropping a like. In the comments below, guys, let me know how does this impact your overall perspective on REITs now that we've gone over this. Do you, are you worried now about losing 60% in value? Do you, do you like them even more now, seeing how they performed after the crash? You know, what's your thoughts? I would love to hear those in the comment section down below. Also, let me know if people call you an idiot for investing in these things, knowing how high real estate is. I get comments like that all the time, so I'm really curious about what you're experiencing out there and your perspective. With that being said, thank you so much once again, guys, for spending time with me here on the channel. It means the world to me. You guys are family to me, and I just really appreciate you being here. If you're new to Money in Life TV, make sure to subscribe for weekly videos on finances, investing, and taxes. Have a great week, everybody. Use this information to live your life on Caged, and I will see you all in the next video. Peace, guys. Love y'all.